those look like, don't we? Let's flag it away. There's plenty of activity going on, um, especially in um, a diverse kind of way. There's been a diversification um, in that not everyone's into rock music anymore. A lot of the musicians are, are now um, involved in drama, theatre, uh, cinema, mm. art, whatever. Only drawn Dr. Dace. I'm not him yet. Music sort of will probably keep going after the after the play's finished. But it's just like um moving into something different and sort of building up um sort of personal resources so that you can go into yeah. the next project. Make living out of lines like that, do you? Better than living out of men's pockets. I hear Trevor Clark has a big one. It's all my money. Oh! Look out! He's dirty in the wise man! To me, you know, the most important thing about, about the things that I do in, in drama and in music is the participation of the audience. And, um, you know, I, th I think it's important for people to be stimulated, for people to be involved in the things that they're, as, as audience, and the things that they're watching or hearing or whatever. Um, you know, hopefully people can get something out of it. That's the reason I do it. I think it's, you know, the reason most serious artists do what they're doing. Right. Um, and you don't think that they're encouraged to do that at a pub, or they're encouraged to do something else, perhaps, at a pub? Well, yeah, I mean, people tend to, tend to go to the pub and drink and get into a mindless, thoughtless sort of mentality. A lot of great music in Wellington is often drowned out by the sound of people eating and drinking. If you move into other areas like theatres, even playing gigs in theatres, you can maybe stretch your, the bounds of your audience and people who who come to listen for something else other than just um, tap the foot. Wellington artists tend to think that we create the art. Now somebody should come along and do our promotional activities for us. Do um, they make any effort to actually go and get somebody to do that? Hire a well, manager? Most don't. Um, on, on, on odd occasions there's an entrepreneurial type um, usually who just ends up ripping the band off and making it impossible for them to work. If you're the right person to, to manage a rock band, you know, like if you've got the right attitudes and, and, you, and you know how to do it, you probably do another business, I suppose, <laughs> in New Zealand. It's a hive of activity and there's a few people doing a lot of things, but um, as has been pointed out before, it's, it's all art and very little business. Ah, Art Attack Performance Cafe, live music. This looks good. Hi, yeah, sorry we're closed. What do you mean closed? It's 10.30 on a Friday night. Yeah, well, you see, it's a residential area, you no, know. No live music. No, would you like a nice nut burger? Uh, no, thanks. Or a celery milkshake? Uh, no, thank you. Decaffeinated muesli, no, something think, like that? Stir think... fried leather sandal? Um... Darling, you got to keep trying. This is the other side of Wellington, headbanger country. These guys mostly come from the teenage wastelands of Wainui and the Hutt Valley. The Hutt is, is uh, underestimated, I think, because it's, it's a big city. It's, it's more like a, an urban sprawl, but it's, there's a lot of people in it, and a lot of music comes from there. What sort of music? Pub rock, heavy metal. <laughs> Strike Master aren't likely to get an Arts Council grant, despite the fact that they play 100% original material. This is blue collar rock and roll, played by and for people who work all day and play all night. Well, we've always had metal bands in Wellington. We've had metal bands here for at least 10 years under different labels and things. And I guess it's just sort of built up whereby you've just had this solid underground type of audience that. Uh, do turn up and uh, usually turn up in droves so therefore it's viable for bands that from up north they travel down here bands from down south that don't do all that well anywhere else usually do quite well in Wellington you got to keep trying. I've been there myself 
just know what to listen And we'll fall from the shell We've done, just done a tour supporting an overseas group, a couple of them actually, and both of them were quite stunned to find that we were holding down day jobs as well. But we have to do this to get the band ahead. Every, every cent that the band makes basically goes into pushing the band forward uh, with recording and equipment and things like that, and we tend to have to keep ourselves fed and clothed and whatnot, so we have to work. I'd like to think we could make it from Wellington. We've recorded an album in Wellington. That's the first step. We've had a, obviously a shortage of gigs in Wellington. At one stage we really only had the cricketers that people could go to. Now we've got the cricketers, the terminus, the pulse. So we hopefully now have a more healthy live thing than we have ever had in Wellington and hopefully that will reverse a situation that we've had before where we've had you know bands making records but um, you know, you had to be pretty uh, quick to catch them live because they never made, you know, one live performance. You've got no show of hearing any of these records on primetime commercial radio here. The only Wellington record they played in the last year was Life Begins at 40. If you want to hear anything else, you might try the student station, Radioactive. There's always been an ethos of music should be a statement of art as opposed to music should be something that we can sell and package and do whatever with. But I don't think that's inherently wrong because I think from within that there's going to be growth in other areas and that others will see it happening and they'll copy it and they'll hone it and change it, file it down and turn it into something that perhaps has more public appeal. So whilst you can perhaps knock the cultish um, image that Wellington bands might have, I don't think that's, that's something that should be knocked, it should be something that should be fostered. I think radio reflects nothing in Wellington. We try as much as possible to foster local music. Certainly we've got a responsibility, I think, to face, to do that. Even Radioactive, without sounding negative, have a tendency to play or to format to a particular style of music, which is um, alternative. In inverted commas. In inverted commas. Wellington is very strong in heavy metal music. There's a lot of music that we just can't touch simply because it's either the format's wrong or it's, it doesn't sound right on our station. I believe a band like Flesh Device, for example, a little more hardcore type music, would really only come out of a place like Wellington. Um, the, Odes the last EP of theirs that we received, we got a lot of complaints from listeners about. Terribly Wellington. No, is it? it needn't be. We've got a band like The Actors coming through that are that sort of commercial pop rock. Too poppy. Very. We have bands like The Pelicans who are part of a, a tradition of sort of soul funk. The Pelicans are almost well, very well established and are in fact quite requested. Um... <laughs> Well, at least they can agree on the Pelicans. I guess they're almost the typical Wellington band. They're amateur in virtually every sense. They're quirky, they play part-time, and they do it because they love it. It's the most full-time part-time band you can, yeah, you can yeah, imagine. Yeah, guys, close. I mean, three, us three are postmen who, who finish it. Uh, Midday, of, about the middle of the day, <laughs> and start and playing spend music. pretty well the rest of the day thinking about or playing music. So no, we, we spend you know all our time at work thinking about music. Yeah, that's right. yeah. I can't, so, st uh, you know, I can't stop. I think we actually probably spend more time thinking about music than professional musicians do. Yeah. A lot of the ones I know, anyway. <laughs> Thank you.